while he slept in a luxurious bedroom. Oh, no. No, no, no. It was not that way at all. You... The casting process for I Dream of Jeannie, a 1965 TV series, was a careful selection of talents to bring to life the comedic genie in a bottle story. Larry Hagman, known for his role in the daytime soap opera The Edge of Night, was cast as Major Anthony Nelson, the astronaut who discovers Jeannie. Hagman's experience and charm made him a perfect fit for the role. Barbara Eden, an established actress and singer, was chosen to play Jeannie. During her audition, she donned a pink bathing suit, similar to the one Jeannie would wear, and demonstrated her ability to convincingly portray the magical, bubbly character. Eden's experience and talent ultimately won her the part. Bill Daly, a veteran of the stage and screen, joined the cast as Roger Healy, Major Nelson's best friend. Daly's natural comedic timing and chemistry with Hagman led to his casting. Hayden Rourke, who played the role of Colonel Alfred Bellows, was already part of the Sidney Sheldon's production team before being offered the part. The casting directors looked for actors who could bring both humor and relatability to their roles. They focused on chemistry tests to ensure that the cast members would work well together, leading to the delightful and entertaining series that became I Dream of Jeannie. Ouch! What's the matter? Oh, oh it, it is nothing. I just saved a woman's life from some gangsters in Chicago. Oh. The directorial vision behind the 1965 TV series, I Dream of Jeannie, was mainly shaped by the show's creator and primary director, Sidney Sheldon. Known for his background in writing hit Broadway musicals and screenplays, Sheldon brought a unique blend of humor, romance, and fantasy to the series. Sheldon's creative influences stem from his love for classic Hollywood comedies and fairy tales. He aimed to create a whimsical world where magic and humor coexisted, and the story of an astronaut who accidentally frees a 2,000-year-old genie fit the bill perfectly. Sheldon's directorial style was characterized by his attention to visual detail and comedic timing. He often used wide shots to capture the vibrant colors and set designs, while close-ups highlighted the actor's facial expressions and reactions. The director worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure each scene was visually appealing and emotionally engaging. In terms of collaboration, Sheldon maintained an open and approachable atmosphere on set. He welcomed input from the cast and crew, believing that a collective effort would yield the best results. He often collaborated with the show's lead actors, Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman, to refine their characters and develop the show's romantic tension. Sheldon's vision for I Dream of Jeannie was to create a light-hearted, entertaining series that would appeal to a broad audience. His commitment to humor, visual storytelling, and character development helped the show become a beloved classic that continues to captivate viewers today. Rang. <laughs> I Dream of Jeannie was a popular TV series that aired from 1965 to 1970. The show starred Barbara Eden as a 2,000-year-old genie and Larry Hagman as an astronaut who becomes her master. Throughout the series, Jeannie uses her magical powers to make Tony's life easier, but her magical interventions often lead to comedic and chaotic situations. One of the most memorable characters in the series is Jeannie's evil sister, played by actress Billy Wilder. Her character brought a lot of humor and drama to the show. I Dream of Jeannie has had a significant impact on popular culture and has inspired countless parodies and references in other TV shows and movies. The show's iconic theme music and opening sequence are still recognizable today. But there are many funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the making of I Dream of Genie that you might not know. Keep watching this video to learn more. Do you have a favorite character or episode from I Dream of Genie? Or perhaps a personal story of how this TV series has inspired or impacted your life? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. It was nothing. Nothing? <laughs> We saw it. Oh, I saw it too, and I was pretty shook up at it. The production of the 1965 TV series, I Dream of Jeannie, took place primarily in California. The set design was a crucial aspect of the show's success, with the creation of Jeannie's bottle and the interior of her bottle home requiring meticulous crafting. The bottle was designed to be big enough for actress Barbara Eden to realistically enter and exit, yet small enough to fit on a soundstage. The show's outdoor location, such as the Astronauts Beach House, were filmed at the famous 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles. However, the desert scenes were shot in the California desert 
near Palm Springs to replicate the Middle Eastern setting where Jeannie was found. Logistical challenges during filming included managing the special effects, such as Jeannie's magical appearances and disappearances. The production team employed innovative techniques like using a puff of smoke machine to conceal Jeannie's entrances and exits. Additionally, they used a split screen to film Jeannie blinking, as it was challenging for Eden to blink her eyes and maintain the iconic Jeannie expression simultaneously. Despite these challenges, the production of I Dream of Jeannie was a success, thanks to the hard work and creativity of the cast and crew. The show's unique blend of comedy, fantasy, and romance captured the hearts of audiences and has endured as a beloved classic for generations. Oh, thank you, I don't feel very well. I'd like to go home. <laughs> I Dream of Jeannie was a popular television series that aired from 1965 to 1970 on NBC. The show, which was a consistent winner throughout its six-year run, featured astronaut Larry Hagman who discovers a genie, played by Barbara Eden, in a bottle. The typical situation comedy ensues as Hagman tries to keep his secret while Eden's magic often gets him into trouble. The show, which was created by Sidney Sheldon, was a hybrid of Bewitched and featured a similar premise of a magical being living with a mortal. However, I Dream of Genie had its unique elements, such as the setting of a military base and the character of Major Nelson, who was a more serious and straight-laced character compared to the protagonist of Bewitched. Barbara Eden's portrayal of Genie, a genie with supernatural powers, was a significant aspect of the show's appeal. Genie was not only beautiful, but also had a playful and mischievous personality which often led to humorous situations. Despite her mischief, Jeannie had a deep affection for her master, Major Nelson, and always meant well. The show's supporting cast, which included Bill Daly as Hagman's best friend and Hayden Rourke as a military psychiatrist, added to the show's charm. The chemistry between the cast members was evident, and their performances contributed to the show's success. I Dream of Jeannie was a product of its time, and reflected the cultural values and attitudes of the 1960s. The show's portrayal of gender role, for instance, was typical of the era, with Jeannie often playing a subservient role to Major Nelson. However, the show also challenged traditional gender roles in some ways, such as Jeannie's use of her powers to assert her independence. The show's popularity endured long after its cancellation, and it continues to be a beloved classic. The show's simple yet engaging storylines, memorable characters, and timeless humor have made it a favorite among audiences of all ages. In conclusion, I Dream of Jeannie was a successful and influential television series that captured the hearts of audiences during its six-year run. The show's unique blend of humor, fantasy, and romance, along with its talented cast and memorable characters, have made it a classic that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. <laughs> Jeannie, it's not happening all over again. Oh, no. The creation of the I Dream of Jeannie score and soundtrack was a collaboration between composer Hugo Montenegro and musician Earl Hagerl. The music they created complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the TV series, which followed the life of an astronaut who accidentally frees a genie from a bottle. Hugo Montenegro, an accomplished composer, created the show's main theme, which was a playful and whimsical tune that reflected the show's light-hearted and fantastical nature. The theme song was instantly recognizable and became one of the most memorable aspects of the series. Earl Hagen, a renowned musician, composed the background music for the show. He used a variety of instruments, including the harp, flute, and strings, to create a magical and otherworldly atmosphere. The music was used to heighten the comedic moments and to underscore the emotional moments between the characters. Both composers worked closely with the show's producers and directors to ensure that the music aligned with the show's tone and storyline. They understood that the music needed to enhance the viewer's experience and help to tell the story. The score and soundtrack for I Dream of Genie were critical to the show's success. The music added a layer of depth and complexity to the story and helped to create a unique and memorable viewing experience. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the music for I Dream of Genie made significant contributions to the show's enduring popularity and legacy. It's been going downhill. <laughs> you wouldn't tell anybody about this, would you? Uh, are you kidding? I may be drunk. Jackie Coogan, known for his role in Tom Sawyer and Little Robinson Crusoe, 
Made a fortune in the 1920s with a contract from MGM that earned him 500,000 plus 60% of the gross profits. Philip Ober, who played Ricky Ricardo's producer in I Love Lucy, made a memorable appearance in one of Lucy's Hollywood episodes. Barbara Eden, the star of I Dream of Jeannie, has a soft spot for dogs and owns a chocolate labradoodle named Jin Jin, inspired by Jeannie's dog on the show. I had you? Uh, no thanks, we're just looking. Tony, I think you've been in orbit too long. One of the most iconic scenes in I Dream of Jeannie is from the first episode, where Major Nelson accidentally discovers Jeannie in her bottle. As he rubs the bottle to investigate it, Jeannie suddenly appears in a burst of smoke, much to Nelson's surprise. The director, Gary Nelson, expertly builds tension and suspense, using close-ups to capture Nelson's reaction and wide shots to showcase the magical appearance of Jeannie. Barbara Eden, who played Jeannie, recalls the filming of this scene I had to practice the entrance thousands of times to make sure I got it right. The smoke, the costume, and the timing had to be perfect. The result is a memorable and iconic moment that sets the tone for the entire series. Another iconic scene is from the episode The Generals, where Jeannie uses her powers to help Nelson pass his flight physical. The scene is shot in a medical examination room, with the camera focusing on Nelson as he undergoes various tests. Meanwhile, Jeannie is hidden from view, using her magic to manipulate the test results. The scene is a masterclass in direction and editing as the audience is kept in suspense, wondering how Jeannie will manage to pull off the deception. Bill Daly, who played Major Roger Healy, recalls the filming of this scene we had to do a lot of takes to get it right. The timing was crucial, and we had to make sure that the audience could follow what was happening without getting confused. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences, thanks in large part to the strong direction, performances, and cinematography. They have become enduring symbols of the show's charm and humor and continue to be celebrated by fans of all ages. <laughs> I'm telling you it'll work. It's a cinch. Now all we have to do is program her personality. Now how would you describe Jeannie? What In the world of classic television, small details often become beloved pieces of larger stories. For instance, the character Major Anthony Nelson was reachable at the phone number 783-7099 before it was updated to 555-7231. These numbers connected viewers to a world of comedy and fantasy. Unexpected moments can define a character, as was the case with Ted Cassidy's portrayal of Lurch. Originally intended to be mute, Cassidy's impromptu delivery of you rang. With his deep voice during the pilot episode unexpectedly turned Lurch into a character with a voice, much to the delight of audiences and creators alike. The background of actors can be as rich as their on-screen personas. Harold Good, known for his various roles, was born to Lillian and Louis Goldstein, New Yorkers with Russian Jewish heritage. This diverse background contributed to the depth he brought to his performances. Each actor's unique history and spontaneous creativity contributed to the memorable experiences of the shows they were part of. You are a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I Dream of Jeannie, a 1965 TV series, brought magic and comedy into American living rooms, captivating audiences with its enchanting story of an astronaut who discovers a bottle containing a 2,000-year-old genie. The show's lighthearted and fantastical elements provided a refreshing escape from the realities of the mid-60s, resonating with viewers seeking entertainment and laughter. The series influenced pop culture in various ways, particularly through its iconic depiction of Jeannie the genie and her distinctive ponytail, her in costume, and magical abilities. These elements became enduring symbols and were frequently referenced and parodied in other media, such as cartoons, advertisements, and films. I Dream of Genie also contributed to discussions on gender roles and power dynamics, albeit in a playful and exaggerated manner. Genie, while possessing magical powers, often found herself in situations where she was subservient to her master, Tony Nelson. This portrayal, though problematic by today's standards, reflected the prevailing social attitudes of the time and sparked conversations about the expectations and limitations placed on women. Moreover, the series showcased the space race era's fascination with space exploration and the astronaut lifestyle. By featuring an astronaut as the lead character, I Dream of Genie tapped into the national curiosity and excitement surrounding space travel, further solidifying its connection with contemporary culture. 
In summary, I Dream of Genie left a lasting impact on popular culture, offering a unique blend of humor, fantasy, and social commentary. Despite its dated elements, the show remains a nostalgic touchstone for older audiences and continues to influence modern media. Uh, no more calls, doll. The Nelson House in I Dream of Genie was situated on the Columbia Ranch backlot in Burbank, specifically on a curved road called Blondie Street. The exterior of the Bellows House, which was also used in Bewitched, could be seen in the background when Tony drove his car away from home. Larry Hagman, who played Tony, was known for being difficult to work with during the show's production. The producers even considered replacing him with Darren McGavin, going as far as writing a story where Tony loses Jeannie and McGavin finds her. However, studio executives preferred Hagman over the producer's choice. Later in his career, Hagman was not the first choice to audition for the role of J.R. Ewing on Dallas. Robert Foxworth had been offered the part, but Hagman won the role after showing that he could play a character that wasn't completely unsympathetic. Yeah, we were talking about an old friend of the family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, was there anything I could do? Uh... I Dream of Jeannie, a 1965 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was popular among audiences. The show's lighthearted and fantastical elements, combined with Barbara Eden's charming performance as Jeannie, helped it gain a loyal following. Critics have noted the show's formulate nature and lack of depth, with the New York Times describing it as a trifle and slight. However, others have praised its humor and the chemistry between Eden and co-star Larry Hagman, who played Major Nelson. Audience reactions were generally positive, with the show's blend of comedy, romance, and fantasy striking a chord with viewers. I Dream of Genie was a consistent ratings hit and remains a popular classic today. The series received one Emmy nomination for Outstanding Costume Design in 1966. While it didn't win, the nomination speaks to the show's visual appeal and the creativity of its costume designers. These accolades, while limited, are still significant for those involved in the show. They serve as a testament to the hard work and talent of the cast and crew and help to solidify the show's place in television history. The enduring popularity of I Dream of Genie among audiences is a further testament to its appeal and cultural significance. Now, as Doctor, remember the landing module is named after the dog? <laughs> yeah, Snoopy. Uh, or Snoop, that's right, that's right. In the filming of I Dream of Genie, actress Barbara Eden became pregnant shortly after shooting began on the pilot episode. To accommodate her growing belly, director Gene Nelson devised a creative shot he called the ATB or Above the Baby. This involved following Jeannie's arm across the room when necessary. Meanwhile, Jackie Coogan, who played Dr. Bellows in the series, was featured in the biography Who's Who in Comedy by Ronald L. Smith in 1992. Paul Lind, who played Major Nelson, had a hairstylist named Stan Finesmith, who was also described as his sweet mate and chauffeur bodyguard in a 1976 People magazine article. During Lind's lifetime, this was the closest the media came to hinting at his homosexuality. A friend of Lynn, Kathy Rudolph, stated in a 2018 interview that being gay and having to hide it frustrated him. Hey, wait a minute. I can get my car back within the hour. What do you mean? I know how to get Dr. Bell. During the filming of I Dream of Jeannie, the relationship between the show's two leads, Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman, was quite friendly. They often shared laughs and jokes on set, which helped create the warm chemistry seen on screen. However, Eden once revealed that Hagman had a mischievous side. He would sometimes sneak up behind her and pull on her ponytail while she was in character, causing her to break out of her trance-like state with a burst of laughter. Behind the scenes, the show's creator, Sidney Sheldon, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He reportedly rewrote the pilot episode 17 times before he was satisfied with it. Sheldon also insisted on using a special blink for Jeannie's magical spell casting which required Eden to quickly close and open her eyes in a specific way. This became a signature move for the character and added to her charm. The iconic genie bottle, which was used as genie's home and mode of transportation, was a source of both fascination and frustration for the cast and crew. The bottle was designed with a tiny opening, making it difficult for Eden to enter and exit it smoothly. As a result, she had to be carefully lifted in and out of the bottle by the prop department. Despite these challenges, the bottle became one of the show's most recognizable symbols and remains a beloved part of the series' legacy. 
The show's crew members also had their fair share of memorable experiences. Bill Daly, who played Major Nelson's best friend and fellow astronaut Roger Healy, once shared an anecdote about a practical joke that went awry. During a break in filming, Daly decided to surprise Eden by hiding in her dressing room. However, when he jumped out to scare her, he accidentally knocked over a shelf, causing a lamp to fall and shatter. Eden was startled but unharmed, and Daly quickly helped clean up the mess, hoping that no one would find out about the incident. Overall, the making of I Dream of Jeannie was filled with laughter, camaraderie, and a shared commitment to creating a magical and entertaining show. Despite the occasional mishap or challenge, the cast and crew remained dedicated to bringing Jeannie and her world to life, creating a beloved series that continues to captivate audiences today. It's the princess for me. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello, doctor. Barbara Eden is currently the only surviving cast member of I Dream of Jeannie following Bill Daly's death in 2010. Jackie Coogan, who appeared in the show, is known as the ex-stepfather of Don Stroud. Judy Carn, another cast member, performed American Moon on The Ed Sullivan Show in July 1969, where she was introduced as Judy Crane due to Sullivan's notorious mispronunciation of names. Him? Yeah, I wouldn't put that wedding dress back on just yet if I were you. Roger's pretty unpredictable. As a matter of fact... I Dream of Jeannie, a 1965 TV series, holds a unique place in film history. As a fantasy sitcom, it presented a blend of genres that was not common at the time. The show's whimsical depiction of a genie and her master contributed to the evolution of television comedy. The series had a significant impact on future filmmaking, particularly in the genre of fantasy and comedy. It demonstrated that fantastical elements could be successfully integrated into mainstream television, paving the way for shows like Bewitched, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and modern day superhero series. I Dream of Genie also inspired subsequent works in various media. For instance, the concept of a magical being granting wishes has been adapted in numerous films and TV shows. The show's influence can be seen in the character design and narrative structure of later productions, such as the Aladdin franchise. Moreover, the show's leading actress, Barbara Eden, became a cultural icon, her portrayal of Genie leaving a lasting impression on popular culture. Her image as the genie in the iconic bottle is often referenced and parodied in various media, attesting to the show's enduring influence. In summary, I Dream of Genie's legacy lies in its innovative genre blending, its influence on future filmmaking, and its inspiration for numerous subsequent works. The show's impact extends beyond its initial run, continuing to shape the landscape of television and film. Yeah, yeah sure, every night. Boy, where'd you find this treasure? Oh, yeah. Pick her up on the beach. See you, right. Uh, hey. In the early hours of January 11, 1982, Paul Lind, a beloved actor known for his comedic talent, was found deceased in his Beverly Hills home. He was 55. Concern arose when he missed a birthday event, leading friends to discover him in his bed, dressed in pajamas and a robe. Despite rumors, evidence confirmed he was alone at his time of passing, with his house alarm set suggesting he died peacefully in his sleep. Bill Daly, another actor from the same era, gained recognition for portraying Howard Borden, the friendly divorced neighbor on The Bob Newhart Show, which aired in 1972. Barbara Eden, celebrated for her role as the charming genie, shared a close bond with her mother, Alice Huffman. Born when her mother was just 16, Barbara later became her caregiver when Alice was diagnosed with lung cancer. Alice passed away at the age of 71 on November 14, 1986. End it now before catastrophe strikes. I'll make your apologies to the congressman. Philip Ober was a reliable American actor who made a name for himself on Broadway in the 1930s and 1940s before transitioning to film and television in the 1950s. He often played corporate villains or military officers with a no-nonsense attitude. Barbara Eden, the star of I Dream of Jeannie, experienced a personal tragedy when her son Matthew Ansara passed away in 2001 due to an accidental drug overdose. He was only 35 years old when his body was discovered in a car in a parking lot off a freeway in Los Angeles, California. Michael Ansara, Barbara Eden's first husband and Matthew's father, has a connection to Catherine Fugate through their family relationship. Ansara was Fugate's ex-uncle-in-law, making him a part of her extended family. In summary, the cast and crew of I Dream of Jeannie were not immune to the challenges of life, with Barbara Eden experiencing the loss of her son, 
and Philip Ober continuing to work despite the changing landscape of the entertainment industry. Meanwhile, Michael and Sir's family connections extended beyond the show, linking him to other individuals in the entertainment world. Mineral. <laughs> time is up. Gas! An ingot of Finkelium. What did... Ron Massack and his wife, Kay, have been regular participants in the Hollywood Christmas Parade since 2013, often joined by family members. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, was a father of two children, Heidi and Preston Hagman, who made appearances on Dallas. Interestingly, I Dream of Jeannie and Get Smart, both premiering on NBC in 1965, shared several similarities. They were five-season shows with female leads named Barbara, produced 139 episodes, and concluded each series by having the lead characters marry, effectively ending the romantic tension. <laughs> After the end of I Dream of Jeannie, both Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman continued to work together in various projects. However, Hagman's personal life was fraught with challenges. His long-time struggle with alcoholism led to his mother kicking him out of their home in Connecticut. Hagman has admitted to being under the influence during many Genie episodes, which affected his performance. Eden wrote in her 2011 autobiography that Hagman regretted the impact of his substance abuse on his work. Despite these challenges, the show remains a beloved part of television history. Hey, you know, uh, uh, not here. Oh, well, I will go upstairs and see if you left anything there. Yeah, Thank I'll, you. I'll... Ron Masek, who later played a role in I Dream of Jeannie, received a contract offer from the Chicago White Sox at the young age of 16. The offer was made by none other than Hall of Famer Rogers Hornsby. In the Coogan family, Jackie, who played Major Anthony Nelson in the series, was the older brother of Robert Coogan. Three years after the show ended, a cartoon version of Jeannie was released, running from 1973 to 1975. In this version, a teenager named Corey Anders, played by a young Mark Hamill, rescues Jeannie. Accompanying Jeannie was a bumbling male Jeannie sidekick named Babu, voiced by Joe Besser of the Three Stooges. Unlike the original series, it was Corey, not Captain Nelson, who played the lead role in the cartoon. Good size. <laughs> it's a special treat. Today is my birthday. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1981. His co-star, Barbara Eden, was inducted into the California Broadcasting Hall of Fame in 23. The show also featured notable guest appearances, such as General Chuck Yeager, who appeared in the first season. Yeager was famous for being the first pilot to break the sound barrier. These accolades and appearances highlight the enduring popularity and influence of the series. Me all morning. They're having quite a field day with this little joke. Oh, uh, is that right, sir? Uh, well, I'm sure they'll forget about it. Paul Lind, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, holds a unique place in show business history as the only actor to sing the Ed Sullivan Show theme song from the Broadway musical Bye Bye Birdie on the actual show. Judy Carn, another cast member, had the opportunity to work with Clint Eastwood in his film Pale Rider, but had to decline due to prior commitments. Ron Massack, who also appeared in the series, served as an honorary sheriff of Tarzana, California for 35 years, showcasing his dedication to his community. These actors brought their own unique experiences and talents to I Dream of Jeannie, enhancing the show's appeal and success. Switch those cans on me, I know, and I'm going to find the can, show it to the general to prove to him I'm not crazy. But, Amanda, you promised the major, besides, they said... Larry Hagman, best known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, had a significant career milestone in Dallas, where he appeared in all 357 episodes. However, in Jeannie, Hagman reportedly disliked his character in many of Sidney Sheldon's scripts, according to Barbara Eden's autobiography. Ted Cassidy, who also appeared in I Dream of Jeannie, had a lesser-known connection to the series. He was married to Dan Jesse's sister from 1956 to 1976. Cassidy's role in Genie was that of the Genie's original master, referred to as the master. In summary, while Hagman and Cassidy had notable roles in I Dream of Genie, their careers and personal lives extended beyond the series. Hagman's character in Genie was not to his liking, while Cassidy had a familial tie to a fellow actor. Yeah, that's a little cup of coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Genie. <laughs> Larry Hagman known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, later auditioned for the lead role of J.R. Ewing in Dallas at his wife's suggestion, 
and won the part. Co-star Jackie Coogan, who played Roger Healy, had a notable past as a college friend of Brooke Hart, a kidnapping and murder victim. Coogan was reported to have participated in the lynching of Hart's killers. The popular series aired for five seasons and 139 episodes, with specific airing dates for each season. Season 1's 30 episodes aired every Saturday evening, while Season 2's 31 episodes were all on Monday evenings. Season 3 had 26 episodes, all on Tuesday evenings, and Season 4 followed suit with 26 episodes on Monday evenings. The final season, Season 5, also had 26 episodes, all on Tuesday evenings. What are you so worried about anyway? What am I worried? Give me a careful thing. <laughs> Martin McLean, known for his roles in classic films like The Maltese Falcon, shared a birthday with Humphrey Bogart, his co-star in those movies. McLean's dog in I Dream of Jeannie was named Jupiter, similar to the astronaut's moniker in the show. On the other hand, Larry Hagman, who played the astronaut, later expressed disappointment over not receiving merchandising residuals from the show during his time in Dallas. This goes to show the complexities of early television contracts and the evolving nature of the industry. These details offer a glimpse into the lives of the people behind the scenes of I Dream of Jeannie, showcasing their careers and personal experiences beyond the popular sitcom. I, I wrote a lot when I was a kid, but I haven't been on a horse in five years. Well, you won't be required to perform. All you have to do is... Ron Massack, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, was the first to receive the Muscular Dystrophy Humanitarian of the Year Award and was named Man of the Year by volunteers assisting cancer-stricken families. He also serves as a worldwide ambassador for Child Help USA. Karen Sharp, another I Dream of Jeannie cast member, is a mother to daughters Jennifer Kramer and Kat Kramer with Stanley Kramer. Rita Shaw, who also appeared in the show, played a notable role in the Odd Couple episode made for each other. She played Claire Frost, a nanny hired by Felix, who Oscar describes as a nice, sweet little lady with red cheeks and an umbrella a reference to Julie Andrews' character, Mary Poppins. Shaw also played Cook Mistress Brill in the movie Mary Poppins. Oscar even sings his own version of Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, another allusion to the film. Well, you just don't run across these things very often. Unless, of course, she's faking. Well, doctor, what's the matter? Vinton Hayworth, a key figure in the early days of the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, served as its president from 1951 to 1954 and was one of its founders. Later, he appeared in the popular 1965 TV series, I Dream of Jeannie as General Peterson. In one episode of the series, Tony and Jeannie visit an art gallery where Jeannie admires a painting and remarks that it's an original Ansara. This is a nod to Barbara Eden's real-life marriage to Michael Ansara during the show's run. As for Larry Hagman, who played Tony in I Dream of Jeannie, he was the only original cast member of the 1978 series Dallas who hailed from Texas. Susan Howard, who later joined the cast as Donna Culver, was also a Texan. Hagman's portrayal of J.R. Ewing in Dallas became one of his most iconic roles. No, why, I live with an old uncle. <laughs> Larry Hagman, who played Tony in I Dream of Jeannie, was just a month younger than his co-star, Barbara Eden. Interestingly, Hagman bore a strong resemblance to professional wrestling announcer Jim Ross, known as J.R. The show had strict rules to ensure that nothing improper was implied between Tony and Jeannie. For instance, Jeannie's navel couldn't be shown, and an extra layer was added to the chiffon bottom of her costume to prevent her legs from being seen through it. If they were in the bedroom together, the scene had to show one or both of them leaving the room. Jeannie's bottle was never allowed in Tony's room, and when Jeannie blinked out, they had to show her smoke leaving to avoid any subtle implications. These rules aim to maintain a clean-cut image for the characters and the show. Yes, that's there. <laughs> we showed it. Judy Carn, known for her role in I Dream of Jeannie, had an early start in dance, training at her aunt's dancing school before moving to the Pitt Draffin Academy of Dance. On the other hand, Larry Hagman, who played Major Nelson, discovered his passion for performing arts in high school, particularly the warm reception he received for his comedic roles. Regarding the show's details, the colorized version of the first season reveals a slight inconsistency. Major Nelson, played by Hagman, is seen wearing silver oak leaves, which signify a lieutenant colonel's rank. However, Major Healy's oak leaves are correctly gold, 
representing his lower rank as a major. This discrepancy, although minor, is a fascinating behind-the-scenes insight into the series. How about my watch, sir? It must be worth at least $100. Uh, tells the date and the time and the relevant... Barbara Eden, known for her role in I Dream of Jeannie, caused a stir when columnist Mike Connolly playfully questioned the existence of her belly button. This led to NBC issuing a no naval edict when the feature was to be aired on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Before her fame, Eden formed a close bond with Jan Sterling, who became a mentor to her. They first met on the set of The Vanquished and later worked together in The High and The Mighty and Man with the Gun. As for Judy Karn, she left school at 15 and held various jobs while trying to break into show business. She eventually joined an amateur dramatic company which led to her joining a repertory company by lying about her age and experience. Sir, you're going to. But you're going to explain it to General Peterson. Wait. The NBC television series I Dream of Jeannie made its debut on September 18, 1965, following the premiere of Hogan's Heroes on CBS the previous evening. While Hogan's Heroes started in black and white, I Dream of Jeannie was in color from the beginning. One of the actors who appeared in I Dream of Jeannie was Michael Ansara, who played the role of Kang in three different Star Trek series. He is one of only seven actors to have done so. Woodrow Parfrey, another actor in the series, had a notable background. He was a veteran of World War II and fought at the Battle of the Bulge. His experiences during the war influenced the tough and eccentric characters he played in his career. Ron Massack, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, played a significant part in the establishment of the UCLA Jerry Lewis Neuromuscular Center. He turned the first shovel of dirt for the center while hosting the MDA Telethon in Los Angeles. Philip Ober, who also appeared in the series, was reported to have died of a heart attack in Mexico City. However, further investigation reveals that he actually died of lung cancer at Santa Monica Hospital in Santa Monica, California. Harold Good, another cast member, served in the Army during World War II. He spent two years in the Army, first in a mortar platoon that saw combat in France. After recovering from trench foot in an English infirmary, he was reassigned to a railroad transportation unit in France. Never mind. I'll snap out of this and you'll all be gone. Oh, uh, sorry, I think you better step explain. back. I'd like to try out this. Jackie Coogan, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, suffered a traumatic experience in 1935 at the age of 21 when he survived a car accident that killed his father and best friend, actor Junior Durkin. This event was, as he later described, the single saddest day of his life. The exterior shots of Tony's office in the series were filmed at the now demolished Air Force Technical Applications Center at Patrick Air Force Base, located just south of Cocoa Beach. This building was often referred to as the I Dream of Genie Building by locals. Karen Sharp, another actor in the series, graduated from Hollywood Professional School. Her education and acting career demonstrate her dedication to her craft and her ability to contribute to the entertainment industry. I've got to go over to Dr. Bellows' office. About my slippers? Yeah, yeah, but don't worry. Interestingly, Elizabeth Montgomery, star of Bewitched, was not pleased about the similarities between her show and I Dream of Jeannie. However, since the 1990s, the two series have been considered sister sitcoms, often aired together in syndication due to their shared ownership by Sony Pictures. Michael and Sarah, the husband of Barbara Eden during the show's run, made multiple guest appearances and even directed an episode of I Dream of Jeannie. In one notable episode, Mistress Jin Jin, a glimpse of Barbara Eden's navel was briefly shown, despite the ban on navels on television at the time. <laughs> been thinking of Russia. The hungry iceberg waiting to destroy an... Dabney Coleman was initially considered for the role of coach Hayden Fox and coach, but due to unavailability, Craig T. Nelson took on the part. Actor Ron Massack had an exciting experience riding an elephant in the opening parade of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Paul Lind, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, lived a transgressive lifestyle involving alcohol and drug use. According to biographer Steve Wilson and Joe Florensky, Lynn died of a heart attack at the age of 55, following his father's footsteps, who also died from a heart attack. The authors find it surprising that Lynn didn't have a heart attack earlier, considering his lifestyle. 
It is said that Lynn claimed to have quit his habits after a personal event, which he kept private. Was I speeding? <laughs> Lady, why are you persecuting me? Oh, I, I do not. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, made a guest appearance on Knott's Landing as J.R. Ewing in its second episode. Paul Lynn, another cast member, had a personal connection to history as his older brother Corden tragically lost his life in World War II. In his personal life, Hagman demonstrated a commitment to social causes, being a strong supporter of the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. These facts offer a glimpse into the lives of the actors behind the scenes, highlighting their personal ties to historical events and their contributions to society. How about the time she blinked you to Africa and you were attacked by that tribe of pygmies? Or just Dabney Coleman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2014. Prior to his acting career, Coleman graduated from the University of Hamline with a degree in English. Ron Massack, another actor in the series, is recognized for his 15-year voiceover work as the Vlasic Pickle Stork. Massack's career spans over five decades, with roles in various TV shows and movies. Harold Good, who also appeared in I Dream of Jeannie, had an impressive academic background. He graduated from Albany Teachers College, earned a master's degree, and doctorate in theater at Cornell University. Good's acting career included roles in both TV and film spanning over four decades. <laughs> if the classic 1965 TV series, I Dream of Jeannie holds a special place in your heart, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your favorite memories and experiences related to this iconic show. How did it affect you personally or shape your view of television and cinema? Your engagement keeps our community thriving, so don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. We cherish your thoughts, and we're excited to create a space where we can all celebrate the magic of I Dream of Genie together. Let's dive into the enchanting world of Genie and Major Nelson and reminisce about the laughter, wonder, and romance that made this series a classic. Join the conversation and let your voice be heard. My own pineapple plantation? Oh, well, what is the matter?